last episode, which is the opener, uh, we gave a brief background about the book. And with me here in studio to unpack all of this is Dr. Jay Smith. So Dr. Jay, I want to continue maybe with the introduction about the book so that people understand the importance of this work. Yeah. Now, obviously, why did he have to write the book? This is what we want to talk about. The problem is this. Everything we know about how the Quran was written, everything we know about how this book was written has to come from the traditions, has to come from the standard Islamic narrative. And more precisely, the, it has to come from Al-Buhari because Al-Buhari is the one that explains, that tells us, we'll be getting into that in another episode, how he does that. And that's in Al-Buhari volume six, hadith number 509 and hadith number 510. Just two folios, front and back, that gives the two renditions of the two recensions. Recensions mean two different writings of the Quran, one by Abu Bakr at 632 and the other by Uthman in 652. That's it. That's all you get. And that's what everybody has been looking at and everybody has accepted. You accepted it. I accepted it. Why can you? There's no other reason not to accept it. Shoemaker, although, however, has a problem. And he has the same problem that you and I have had. And we've mm -hmm. said this before. And that is nobody has looked at where Al-Buhari comes in or whether or not he even was there at that time, or did he even know who the Prophet was? Was he an eyewitness to these events? You mean Al-Bukhari's account of the Quran, for instance? The man himself, yeah. the man who actually wrote it. Yeah. So let's, uh, I want to put up a slide just to show you, and, you, and we've done this before, this is a slide. So let's go up here and let's mm -hmm. look at the slide right here. If you look here, uh, we do know that Muhammad died in 632. So see it right there? We'll put 632 up there. According to the Islamic tradition. According to yeah. which Islamic tradition? Al-Bukhari again. You either have to go to Al-Buhari and someone else, hold on a minute, yeah. according to his biography. So That's right. let's yeah. put the biography up there. So the, the biography of Muhammad in green was, according to everybody that tells us, it was written by this guy right here, uh, and his name is Ibn Ishaq. Look at his date, 765. That is in and of itself a problem right there because that's 130 years after the fact. That's correct. So he obviously Ibn Ishaq was not there when Muhammad died. Ibn Ishaq was not even in the same century that Muhammad lived in. So how does he know the biography of Muhammad? if he's not there. That's true. There's no eyewitness account. That's okay. a problem. That's a problem for me. It's a problem for you. It's mm -hmm. a problem for Shoemaker. That's not the only problem. See, we have nothing by Ibn Ishaq. Not a thing. There's no written account by him. The guy we need to go to is this guy here, Ibn Isham. Look at the date, 833. So and he's the one who solidified the story of Muhammad, to be honest. Well, actually, he just took what he wanted of Ibn Ishaq and threw the rest away. So it's right, only yeah. on his word that we're going on. But since we don't have Ibn Ishaq, and since he doesn't even care much about Ibn Ishaq, let's just get rid of Ibn Ishaq. We'll go throw him away. Big, and he's what gone. is so important about Ibn Ishaq? It's an Abbasid period. It, this, this is all Abbasid, Abbasid because Abbasids yeah. come right in this period here from 750. Right. They come into yeah. power. So we're talking about... A, a, a good 80 years after the Abbasid periods is already in. So that's the first that we hear about this man, Muhammad. We do have another account, and that's this guy here, al wakidi He dies in 835. So those are the two major uh, siras, biographies. But that's not where the Quran comes in. To understand how the Quran was created, we need to go to the Hadith, the sayings of Muhammad. And the guy that writes the story about the Quran is this guy right here, Al-Buhari. Look That's at right. his date, 870. That's 240 years after Muhammad. Meaning he talked about, you know, the first collection, and then he talks about the second collection. He talks the about the two recensions, the That's two right. collections, Abu Bakr and That's Uthman. Right. We have to go to him to find out about it. There are others that come after, like Sahih Muslim. We have Tirmidhi, we have Majah, we have Daud, and we have Najah. And they do talk about the Quran. But this is the guy that first refers to the Quran. He is the first one that refers to how it was compiled these two recensions in chapter of volume six, Hadith 509 and 510. Now we do have two other genres, and that is the Tafsir Nathariq, first introduced by Al-Tabri. He also does talk about the Quran, but he comes after Al-Bahari. Al-Bahari is the first. That's why we're putting him up here. And Al-Tabri did two things, did Tariq, which is history, and did also Tafsir, which is commentary. And commentary of what? Of the Quran. The Quran, exactly. So explaining the Quran, expounding upon it, mm -hmm. telling us and making sure that we understand it. Now. I'll just show you right away. Can you see? Even the biography is 200 years after the fact. The, none of these guys are eyewitness to anything they're writing. And this is why we have little that we know about the origin of the Quran, because we're limited to these traditional uh, sources. But here's what's interesting. The first guy to write any Quranic material is this guy. See who I'm putting up there? Abdul Malik. 
the first Quranic references that we have that we can say, like the Shahada, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Like in the coin, for instance. And is other. him, mm -hmm. but it's on the Dome of the Rock. And you have chapter 4, verse 171 there, and you have chapter 112 on the Dome of the Rock, on the coins, and on his protocol. So he is the first to even introduce any Quranic material. Look when he died, and look when he did this. This was all in 691 and 692. That is a good 60 years after Muhammad. And Shoemaker uh, quotes Robinson's, who did mention Abdul Malik, basically. He's going to say an awful lot about Abdul Malik. You haven't read the book yet, so you don't know yet. In fact, I haven't finished reading it. Almost yeah. the entire book is about this guy. Yeah. This guy is, and we have said this, have we not, all the oh, way through? Uh, we, we've been uh, doing the, this for, for a couple of years now. You've been doing it on your channel. We've been doing it together in our channel. And I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm relieved to see finally an academic book because you and I will talk about it and people discount us immediately. But now we have However. backup. Yeah. However. Yeah. And this is where I'm. I and this is the one thing I'm gonna have a, a I'm gonna have a problem with with Schumacher, and that is he uh, attribute he still gives credit to Muhammad when I believe the credit has to go to these people, the Abbasids. Yeah. Everything we're gonna look at about who Muhammad was, what he did, what he said, how the Quran is put together, actually is in a, is a creation of these people. Notice all of these, as you noted about five minutes ago, all of these are during the Abbasid period. And all of these are in the Abbasid area. All these guys did their work in Baghdad. They were far north and they were hundreds of miles away and hundreds of years later. That's what's important. That's why you need to look at the time. You need to look at the time. Please look at a timeline. And for those of you who are actually following us and have been uh, using our material, what Shoemaker is going to be doing is he's actually going to ask the same questions we've been asking. Why is this all so late? How right. is it that we can trust it if it's so late? And if it's not, if it is so late, what of it can we use to then go back to the 7th century? Remember, always go back to the 7th century, go back to the century that everything took place, go back to the place and the time period when supposedly all this happened. Because remember, everything we know about the Quran was created by between 610 and 632. 610 is when the revelations start to be revealed. 632 is when Muhammad dies, so it should have been completely finished by 632, not written until 634, and then rewritten in 652. So we're talking about 7th century, 7th century. We've always said, if you want to find out about the Quran, go to the 7th century. Yeah. If you want to find out about Muhammad, go to the 7th century. That's what Shoemaker is going to be doing. And that's why right. this book is so important, because now we have an academic who is actually quoting other academics, who's putting it all together, and he's asking a very salient question, when was the Quran created and who was the one responsible for the Quran? I'm not going to give the answer yet. That's yet to come. And I, I want to say, I want to defend Shoemaker. I actually admire the fact that he is addressing these issues, even if maybe the perception it wasn't direct. I think the guy is smart enough to where he's given us ample evidence, at least in the introductory part, you can tell the direction that he's taking his book. Next time when we come back, by the way, I want us to talk about this fear of conf confronting the standard Islamic narrative, because this is really what, in my humble view, is stopping some of these uh, academicians of uh, confronting some of these discrepancies. In fact, Shoemaker goes into that in detail. He brings up, and we have talked about this quite a few times, why is there such a reticence to confront something that should be natural, and that is doing a historical critical, critical study of the Quran, doing a historical criti critical study of Muhammad, doing a historical critical study of Mecca, the book, The Man in the Place. How many times have we said this in our episodes? You've got to confront the book and the man in place using historical criticism because the book, the man in the place are all historical people, events, and places that happen in history. Therefore, why aren't we given historical critique of it? Shoemaker, is going to show us where the problem lies. That's for the next episode. We're going to go and actually do a, maybe one or two episodes looking at this fear of confronting historically both the Quran and Muhammad and Mecca. Amen. And I think, uh, folks, you are going to love this video series because it's going to whet your appetite one episode at a time. And we really encourage you to go ahead and get this book once you watch the first episode, make sure you get the book because you're going to follow along because we are going to give you quotations, sometimes page numbers where these quotations came from. But this book is a trove of quotations of scholars, by the way, who confronted some of these uh, traditional Islamic narratives, but maybe they didn't come out as forcefully as we are going to see now in this particular book. Until next time. 
Have a blessed day. This is Al Fadi. God bless.